Hello, hi, my name is Samaya Hodges. As you can see here, I am the plaintiff in a case filed against the United States. And you can see it says the Federal Bureau of Investigation, um, the federal and state law enforcement officers, the federal judges, um, the former attorney general, which is Catherine Cortez of Nevada, the secretary of defense, the national coordinator for health information technology, um, Department of Defense, the former Nevada State, okay, um, Attorney General. I said that former Attorney General, that was for the United States earlier, and then this one here is for Catherine Cortez. And in her official and personal capacity, Trina Giles in her personal and official capacity, the Department of Justice, and any other government agent and every other affiliate involved in the course of the investigation in their personal and official capacity. And these are all the defendants. And as you can see, I filed this case here with the United States District Court, the Eastern District of Missouri, Eastern Division. And um, here's the date here. That was when it was stamped October the 8th, 2015. And here's the court seal, as you can see. Um, here's Samaya Hodges. It's from a Gregory L. Lynn Hurst, um, the clerk. This is a true and original copy. This comes from the district court, the Eastern District of Missouri. And the clerk, although the clerk says Gregory L. I mean, Gregory J. Lynn Hurst, um, it was signed by Jason W. Docker, it seems. But anyways, this is the original seal from the court case. This here particular case, like I said, October 2015, was filed with the Missouri courts. Um, the defendant's uh, defaulted on this case. They were held in contempt of court for non-compliance on this particular case. So they technically they defaulted on this case. Then I went right in with a writ of execution and did all the other motions to follow up behind that so that they can um, go ahead and grant me the relief sought in this year particular case. And I want the world to kind of see what I asked for because in my studies, this is just a judicial allegations, but in my studies, in Missouri, at their law uh, library, I was going through the probate law books, and it told me that I can ask for, there were um, statutes and citations and, and different um, readings in the book that tells me that I can ask for all of my ancestors' um, uh, inheritance, uh, unclaimed documents, unclaimed hidden treasures, um, land, a diamond mines field. I can ask for anything that belongs to my ancestors and I can date it back as far as I wanted to. This was in the statutes in Missouri. So in my court, throughout the course of my investigation and me filing this document and knowing that, sure, I thought it was some hidden treasure out there. So yes, I began asking for these things. This is just some closing argument. These are fraudulent misrepresentation, um, assault and battery. Uh, let's continue on. Let's get to the end on um, the cause of action here. And I'm missing a page or two, but um, in here, it says plaintiff demands her de descendants probate estates for the length of and the, the length of time traced back in her genealogical research. Well, one of the reasons why I was filing this case is because some corrupt police officers had did some illegal studies of my DNA and they traced my DNA to be one of the oldest living um, heirs of our, of our ancestors in Africa. So that's why I said um, as far as they had traced it back and they had traced it all the way back. And not only that. Uh, in 1987, I'm going to see if I can find a copy of that, I was inherent the original certificate of title. That title is dated all the way back from uh, August the 9th, 1912 A.D. And so that's so just keep that in keep that in mind just for a little bit as I continue to explain this. And so here you can see I asked for as far as it can trace back in my um, genealogical research. Okay, so I asked for all of that, and let's see, as part of the damages and remedies and judges or recovery settlement. Wait a minute, this would include the discovery of assets such as real land, real and personal properties, income earned during the descendants' um, lifetime, their estates, um, the growing crop assets in the United States. I mean, anything that um, um, 
that our ancestors in Africa had or own in the United States. Sometimes these, these uh, elderly people, they die and they don't have any family, but yet they own lots of land. And like I said, hidden treasures and un unclaimed insurance policies and, and policies and different things like that. So I went ahead and state that, as you can see here, uh, anything that they own in the United States, as well as the um, descendants of states in native countries, such as Africa and and um uh, well, never mind. Okay, such as Africa. This would include mortgages, interest of mortgage, real properties, and other um, judgments the judge deemed appropriate for this year's settlement. And then I put the case where, where this is all possible, where I found this in the Missouri law book that says that I can ask for un any unclaimed property. And that case right here is what I found. As you can see that. I'm missing another page. It looked like this, and I see if I can't pull it up online. This is the one I carry with me. But also in that estate, it asks for diamond mines, gold fields, um, chattel. That's for all of that. I have, um, so I'm missing a page, and which is not really, um, I'm not surprised by that because throughout this whole ordeal, as you can see, the people that I am up against, they come in and out of this house, steal what they want and take what they want. So it looks like it appears that I'm missing a few pages from this particular document. But one thing they didn't do, as you can see here, it is official. And ever since um, 2015, I have been trying to get justice against these people who have, um, you know, uh, uh, caused me wrong and who have intentionally uh, destroyed my business, my livelihood. I'm going to see if I can get this computer up so I can kind of show you some stuff here who have um, intentionally destroyed my life. Uh, one of the reasons I'm making this here video today is because... I am being held hostage by these uh, defendants. They are holding me hostage electronically. They have illegally chipped me uh, like an animal, and they constantly remind me of that daily. And so they are holding me hostage. I was forced to abandon my home uh, tomorrow, as a matter of fact, would be at three years, January 6, 2015. That's when I went to Missouri because uh, in Las Vegas, Nevada, I had been seeking help and justice since 2012 and no one uh, would help me. So uh, towards the end of December, when my daughter came home for Christmas, I could tell something wasn't right about her. And so I thought at that time that somebody was, um, you know, physically threatening her because she was helping me with this case. And all of a sudden she was just like frozen. She was like terrified and scared. So I just couldn't take that no more. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to go or what to do. And I just know I had to leave Las Vegas because I was felt like that I was trapped there. There was nothing I can do, but yet I had to go and and find a way to get some help to save my child, you know, especially at that point, because I didn't know what else to do with her. And, you know, I was just a desperate mother just trying to get some help at that time. Well, as as of today, three years later, I'm still seeking help. But this time it's very hard and it's been difficult because the United States government and Trump and all these guys are holding me hostage in this electronic hostage. Although, although I am in Houston, I'm forced away from my home in Las Vegas and I am in Houston, Texas right now. Um, and the reason why I say electronic hostage is because this here chip, this device, it controls every other computer that I am in contact with. And not only does it control every other computer, it also controls every organ in my body. And it's the same little tiny chip as they would put in, in a dog. And so um, all of my communications, according to the United States Codes 18, 25 through 20. 25 or uh, 10 through 25 22 that gives you all of the um well that list of the wiretap act and it tells you with that pen register trap and trace which that's what they have also done it gives it gives you like a description of all the communication that they're blocking so these people they can all my phone calls are being rerouted to imposters um, all of my emails I'm sending them to constantly send them to the courts to the courts they are just being blocked uh, when I take um, mail to the post office all of my mail is being blocked they go right behind it and take it so mail that I'm sending to the courts mail that I am send it to Barack Obama. All of it is just being taken and blocked before it reaches these people's destination. And so that's what I mean by I am intentionally being um, held hostage. 
I went from owning at one point a chain of beauty salons, three salons, and a lot of, and a host of other businesses, side businesses that I was working on, such as my uh, own radio talk show. I'm an author of a book, my own product line, and other, um, just little, other little stuff that I did, but two nonprofits. I had all of this going at one time before these people just intentionally um, sabotaged my life. And they did this before I even started this case. They was uh, destroying my business. That's what made me uh, even go and, you know, try to seek justice in Nevada from the first place. In 2012, I wrote absolutely everybody that I can think of, every elected official. Um, 2013, I did the same thing in, in Nevada and outside of Nevada. And yet all it brought me was more trouble when I started trying to seek justice for somebody uh, illegally surveillancing me and intentionally trying to uh, dis uh, destroy my business. So I make this video again because I'm looking for some help. I'm trying to get out of here. I am being held hostage. Um, whenever, if I try to drive somewhere to file documents, they can just shut my truck down at any time. Right now I have no funds. They're blocking everybody from um, giving me any type of financial support. And, uh, you know, they done broke in my home uh, two, three times looking for whatever. I don't know what they're looking for. But the good thing about it is, and I thank God, is that I have walked a straight and a narrow line all my life. I dotted every I and I crossed every T my entire life. And everybody that the United States government um, interrogated and questioned and harassed, threatened and beaten and murdered, um, everybody that they did that to, um, they still couldn't get no, no one to say anything bad about me because, um, like I said, again, there is nothing bad that they can uh, find on me. This here chip that they have chipped me with, this illegal device, they have the ability to record and listen to my thoughts, see through my visual. It's called optical surveillance and the whole nine yards. So basically, Trump, the United States government, has... Um, stolen my entire being. They deprived me of all of my rights, absolutely all of my rights. When a man does not have his own consciousness, his own thoughts, his own sleep, dreams, and visual and all of that, that they I mean they have deprived me of my entire being. So here's where I am right now. So I'm making this video live. Um, I make another one tomorrow with my face and my picture. Being that is kind of late, I just thought I wanted to do something quick because I just got my phone back. It had been down for a couple months. Um, they shut shut my um, all forms of the communication and off. So I've just got this phone fixed today. <clears throat> just got turned on today. So um, that's one of the reasons why I'm making this video, but I am desperately seeking help. I've been trying to seek help from other countries. I contacted the United Nations, Russia, everybody just trying to get some help. Um, again, all of it has been blocked. Whenever this thing come to an head and it get investigated, where the computer forensics, they'll be able to tell from 2012 up until today, which is now 2018, um, they will be able to see the thousands and thousands and thousands of emails and different things from my website in which I tried to contact these people. Also, I have other videos on um, YouTube, too, that I have made in regards um, to the United States government, the police officers here I um, holding me hostage um then, then took my child, my youngest daughter away from her, raped her, um, forced her into sex trafficking and the whole nine yards. So, and this is a school age, middle a school age child. Um, they call her a minor, although she's in college, she's like minor like. And so the law states that she's a minor. So she was still under my guardian and she's still like, you know, a, a minor like child. I still in school, minor like. So they call that a minor like child, but she was a virgin. She was a Christian. She was all of that before she was forced to go to New York and to um, do sex, commit sexual favors for these people in um, Congress. Uh, when she got there, I had no clue that she was even going to New York. And that was so not like her at the time because she, at that time, would share absolutely everything with me. She would call me about anything and she would never, ever take a trip without 
get my approval because she was still at that time. Again, a child asking me for directions and guidance, but that was during that same time that she went um, to New York without my um, being aware of that. And when I did find out about it, it was because she had sent me a text. So let's see if I can find that text. She had sent me a text saying that she was in New York and she was staying with a radiologist. I'm sorry, I think he was a cardiologist. Um, but that text and that text, his apartment number was 1306. That was his apartment number. At that time, my apart, my uh, business address at Granny's Beauty Center was 1306. And then her, again, his apartment number was 1306. What the United States government and Trump and all the other guys, what they were doing was uh, let me know because prior to that they would send me notification as to say they are her new guardians now they took ownership over her and forced her into sex trafficking to say that they are her new guardian her new guardians now and that they are she is now their business so they send her wherever they want her to go to perform little sexual favors and different things for her friends to their for their friends so I am again trying to uh, seek help. I'm going to go ahead and pause this right now. This is just a quick spare of the moment. I would like to come back and make another one when I have all of my facts and different things um, ahead of me so that I can show you. And I'm going to be doing that daily from, you know, go ahead and uh, let's see if I can find it. I'm going to be doing that daily, posting up videos with facts to show you and to show the world. But most importantly, I am seeking um, emergency intervention. I'm seeking help from my daughters, me, my daughters, my brother, and some of my other family members. So I pray to God that Barack Obama can get this message. Uh, I've been trying to write him, write him the whole time when he was in office. It appears that his um, all the mail that I sent has been uh, interrupted. Um, the courts are aware of this case. They gave me orders to go ahead and um, proceed with a summons, but it was shortly after I got those orders to go ahead and proceed with a summons to these people that they started just murdering people, um, that they uh, start holding me hostage electronically. I was already chipped, but they just start um, making sure that I don't have no get no form of communication outside to the public and to the world. And as you can see, again, this should have made the news. Look at this. This is a this is the original signature from the court, so this should have made the news a long time ago. And as you can see here, look at these look at these people that I'm alleging that's doing all of this. So this should have been in the news a long time ago. And so again, um, I'm just trying to get this out. I pray that um, Barack Obama get a hold to this message because I've been writing him diligently daily, and I've been sending emails and sending them through the mail. But again, it appears that he may not be getting his his mail. The courts have also told me too that they have sent correspondent. And within the last year, when I can go to the court's website, I can see certain correspondent. Hold on, let me I'm I'm sorry, I'm doing two things at one time. This is a picture of me and my daughter and I'm scrolling down her old text messages because I'm trying to find I'm I'm trying to find that message that she sent me. And again, I apologize. I'm so really unprepared. But when I come back here, I would have uh, more documents to, to uh, improve to show you. Here is one of, look at this. This is what I showed the judge in Las Vegas because I did start this case in Las Vegas. And the judge ruled in my favor, but she was just saying that I may not know who it is that's doing it. But I do agree that these things are happening to you. Now, this is a phone call I got March the 10th. And I believe this was in 2000. And uh, 14 at my salon. And look what the call ID says. So this stuff is true. This is a call ID. This is the number that called me. And again, this is. That's the number that called me. So this is some real stuff we said. And that's one of the things that I showed to the judge. That she she looked at. That's one of the pieces of evidence I showed to her in, in Las Vegas. And she said, yes, um, you this is happening to you. And I did, you know. Uh, ruled in your favor and although the judge is ruling my favor I'm still caught up in this mess because the defendants refuse to cooperate they refuse to set a date for the settlements conference they refuse to issue me technically the entire Africa or not only Africa but the entire world technically belongs to Somalia but I would settle with Africa because in this statement I did ask for all of our ancestors uh, rights and um 
everything back. So technically because they defaulted on this and at the time I really didn't know what I was doing. I'd never even been in a situation like this before where I had to defend myself in court. So I was kind of really naive and kind of, you know, dumb going into it, to be honest with you. Uh, I just had no clue, but I seen that and I was like, wow, I mean, tell me there's some hidden treasures, you know, that that's in Africa from my ancestors. Well, let me ask for it. And I had no clue that it would end up, you know, to, to this here magnitude. So basically the entire Africa belongs to me because the defendants uh, not showing up for, cut, for court, not obeying the judge's orders, uh, for non-compliances. They didn't do any of that, so they was held in contempt of court, as you can see here. So basically, that means everything that I asked for at that time, I should have been granted. granted. And by them uh, just, uh, you know, probably just kind of like, I don't know, maybe they just thought, they weren't going to show up in court or they didn't have to uh, comply because I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And I really didn't. But I learned as I was going and I studied and they kind of like backfired in their face because, you know, and so that's what happened. And so but since then, so much has transpired. But nevertheless, if you're out there and if you're listening to this here, I am desperately seeking some help. I'm trying to get to Barack Obama. I'm trying to get him to come and rescue me and my daughters. One who is in California, who's a student going to school to be a doctor, but yet she is being held hostage. Um, as for ransom, so they, the defendants are just got to close out or cloach nest on her and won't let her go, won't let her come visit me, won't let her call, all of that because they... Um, Unless I bow down and give in to them. So they are holding her as leverage and they're holding her for ransom and as hostage, uh, hostage. So I am desperately trying to seek some help from somebody out there. Again, I had three salons in Las Vegas, Nevada, my own home. I just built a pool and I pay for everything cash. I am a hairstylist and I've been doing that all of my entire life. And everybody knows me in Las Vegas and St. Louis and in um in Minnesota because um I was excellent at my craft and I was the type the person who had this the stylist who would have if I opened up at six in the morning, I probably had a line of people outside waiting on me already. And so um I just wanted to share that share that with you. I'll be getting back with you guys soon. Um, again, I have more information, but I don't have it ready yet. This is just like a quick spare of a moment thing. So I'll get back with you guys later. Just give me a bit and let me pull all this together and I shall uh, make another one soon.